I'll take you back a few years. Yes. The day we had the Nyayo Pioneer Vehicle yes. stall in the stadium in front yes. of all Kenyans. Yeah. What went wrong, do you think, and what can we do to revive such an initiative that was a very noble idea to have a car built in Kenya for Kenyans, yeah. for Africa? What I think uh, happened with the Nyayo Pioneer was, was instructive for design as a design community and also for uh, politicians. I think the primary motive which was to uh, create a vehicle that would engender some pride among Kenyans was a noble one. But the way it was executed, I suspect uh, there were shortcuts taken. So the engineers who were dealing say, with the engine did not speak to the ones who were doing the, the body. Uh, and you could see from the way it was put together that it was a hodgepodge of parts which came from other sources. I think what design should be and what should have been demonstrated there is design is a systems uh, process. We, designers are systems thinkers. And what would have happened is there should have been a central uh, coordinator who would have been a designer, who would have then known how to put everything together. If I just quickly go back to the discussion on architecture, the architect does not build the building, but he designs it and he knows enough about what each other actor does, whether it's an electric, electrical engineer or um, a landscaper or an interior designer, to put together a premise that would be uh, accessible to all. The industrial designer in this case would have done the same. He'd have been there to design the vehicle and then also knows enough about what the others need to input to create a, a cohesive looking product. Uh, the Nyao Pioneer, I think, is a case study of how not to do things it would stand as one of the best examples from our country. I think there's um, quite a number of uh, challenges uh, just from that example. Um, it's true that I think a lot of them are built very uh, haphazardly, that's one. There are fire hazards, which means uh, if one gets fi catches fire, there's mm -hmm. a danger that a couple of homes will be raised to the ground. Uh, I think the challenge is uh, much higher up in terms of it's a systemic problem. So it starts from planning. So in terms of zoning the place so that it's designed for or it's uh, demarcated for human habitation, first of all. The way I've seen it is many of these mushroom overnight because of uh, uh, vacant uh, lots of land and then suddenly mushroom uh, almost in a cancerous uh, progression. Uh, I think the architects also should focus on designing low cost yet effective um, housing for people. And more importantly, if you look at the way in which these uh, slums are built, they're built by the the owners and or the occupants themselves, yeah. which means people have some basic skills in, in building houses. We did it traditionally for millennia, we housed ourselves. But I think architecture, for the most part, has disenfranchised the end user to the point where the occupants feel alienated from the design process. So as, as a challenge, maybe what I would say is that one, it needs to be cost effective and low cost, using appropriate materials that are locally available, but also should uh, co-opt the end user as a, in a co-design and a participatory process. Uh, I think that would be a lot better than just saying we've got buildings for you. We've had this experience in South Africa where the government has built houses for the poor and immediately they get in, they reject the houses because they did not, uh, were not involved in the design process or even the construction. So Kenya can learn from that and say in our quest to lift this massive population of our people from slums to decent housing, we need to engender a more participatory and inclusive uh, uh, design process.